fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Here's a swell idea that can make studying a real pleasure. Before you do your homework at night, mix up some Betty Crocker gingerbread and pop it in the oven. Then, by the time you finish your assignments, you'll have a treat of piping hot, spicy-smelling gingerbread waiting for you. Doesn't that sound great? Mmm, there's nothing like a glass of milk and a big piece of freshly baked gingerbread to make a guy feel good all over. And is it ever easy to bake with Betty Crocker gingerbread mix? All the mouth-watering spices and good things are right in the package. You just add water, beat and bake. It's fun, and it'll hardly take you any time at all. Even kids can bake up perfect gingerbread with Betty Crocker gingerbread mix. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. So be sure to bake some next time you do your homework. You'll love it, because Betty Crocker gingerbread is the real go-to-the-head-of-the-class kind. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow! Are you still there? Hey! The Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding through a valley, saw a man lying on the ground. They dismounted at his side. Oh, oh, easy, oh, easy, easy, Get the first aid supplies while I see if this man's still alive. No, no. Oh, steady, we're here to help you. Wait. A mask. A masked man called Lone Ranger. Oh, thank goodness. I'm Bill Soldier. Shot from ambush by one of Tarbuck's gang. Tarbuck? Is he the man who seized control of the town of Lone Pine? Yes. All of us decent people left. I heard about that. You're a camp north of here. This. Jim Galt's in charge. I, I was trying to reach Smithville. Mail a letter to Washington. Oh. They shot me. Tell Jim Gold. Tarbuck's got a spy in camp. Name's Pete Hanford. How do you know he's a spy? He must be. He and Gold. Only ones who knew I was to ride through here with a letter. I'll see that the letter is mailed. No. Oh, you read it. Do what's best. A moment later, Bill Salter was dead. The Lone Ranger read the letter, then sent Tonto into Lone Pine disguised as a Mexican to gather information about the Tarbuck gang, while he took the dead man to the camp of the refugees. dark when the Lone Ranger neared Jim Galt's camp with the body of Bill Salter. He saw Galt speaking to the refugees near a campfire. And if we can hold out a little longer, we may get the help we need. Where's the help coming from? Yeah. Camp Brady, ten miles west of here. But Jim, I talked to Colonel Miller at the camp. He said he couldn't take action against Tarbuck unless he had orders from Washington. I think he'll receive those orders by telegram. You mean that? I think so. I wrote a complete report of the way Tarbuck took over Lone Pine. The way he treated us. By now, that letter should be on the way to Washington. Oh, Bill Salter left here with it this morning. 
He was to mail it in Smithville. Well, it'll take two weeks for a letter to reach Washington. Pete, if we cut the food rations again, we can hold out for two weeks. Uh, you mean we got to get by with even less growth than we've had? That's right. I, don't I, know. I, do I say we'll starve to death before the Army turns a hand to help us. That's right. Jim, Starving I think Pete Hanford's right. You bet I'm right. I say we got to admit we made a mistake and go back to our homes in Lone Pine. Right. I'd rather pay tar bucks taxes and starve to death. I'd rather starve than pay tribute to a crook. But, uh, Jim, you don't have a wife and kids that'll have to starve with you. I say we got to do one of two things. Either admit we're licked and go back peaceful, or make a fight of it and go back with our guns brazen. Oh, Pete, you talk like a fool. You know we wouldn't have a chance if we tried to shoot it out with tar bucks gunslingers. I'll then go back peaceful. May I speak? Why, he's mad. Where did he come from? Who is he? Hello. Who are you, mister? I'm on your side, Galt. I brought your friend Bill Solder here. Where is Bill? Over there, wrapped in a blanket on the back of his horse. You mean he's dead? Yes. He was ambushed on his way to Smithville. What ambush? Yes. I was with him when he died. He gave me the letter you wrote. Who ambushed him? He said he'd been shot by one of Tarbuck's men, so he couldn't mail the letter in Smithville. How did Tarbuck know about the letter? He has a spy in your camp. What's that? But but only three of us know about the letter. Bill Salter, myself, and... And the spy. Pete Hanford. Are you lying, Owl? Don't draw that gun. I'll kill you! I warned you, Hanford. Oh, my hand. I fired at your gun. The bullet didn't touch your hand. There'll be no more gunplay by either of you. Jake, pick up Hanford's gun. Yeah, I got it. You, mister, holster that shooting iron. Very well. You men had better watch, Hanford. We're watching both of you. Hanford, if it's true that you're working for Tarbuck... It's not. You certainly played Tarbuck's game when you tried to persuade these people to return to Lone Pine. I said I'd rather go back than starve to death. Hanford, someone must have told Tarbuck about Salter writing with that letter. I didn't tell him, and you're the only other man who knew about it. I saw you riding out of the camp last night, Hanford. Did you meet one of Tarbuck's men? No. And no one can prove otherwise. Jim, uh, Bill Salter asked me to read your letter and help you in any way possible. What made him think you could help us? He knew my identity. Just who are you? This letter will explain. It's signed by one of the Army's finest generals. Uh, Let's see. Well, I'll be dead. Who is he? Folks, this man's the Lone Ranger. If he says Hanford's a spy, that settles it. that, That letter don't prove a thing. He, he could have forged it or, or stolen it. All the way he drew his gun is proof enough for me that he's the Lone Ranger. No one else could draw that fast. Oh, that's right. right. Mister, if you read this letter, you know what the situation is. We'll be mighty glad to have your help. We'll do whatever you suggest. Yes, sir. Then uh, tie Pete Hanford and hold him prisoner. Oh, no, no, wait. Hold him. Shut up, Hanford. All right, tie him up, boys. I got to the rope right here. No. no, 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 no. We'll keep him tied in his own wagon. What else do you suggest, mister? Stay here and don't lose faith in your government. I'll return as soon as possible. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'm going to try to find a way to smash the Tarbuck gang. Easy, steady, big fella. Come Early the following morning, just after daybreak, the Lone Ranger and Toto met in their camp on the hillside. The Indian told all that he had learned of the gang's plans. The Lone Ranger listened carefully, then said, Now, as I understand it, Tonto, Tarbuck figures the followers of Jim Galt will be starved into submission. That's right. They'll either return to town and submit to his domination, or try to attack and drive out the crooks. If them attack Kimasabi, Tarbuck gunman, meet them and kill them. And after they're dead, he'd claim that their attack was an armed rebellion against law and order. Not right. But what if Jim Galt and the other townspeople neither attack nor surrender? What if they simply drive their wagons to a new location and start a new town? Then Tarbot be plenty glad. Then him have land and homes of all people. Hmm. So he figures he'll win no matter what the people do. Not right. And he's probably counting on his spy to give him advanced knowledge of any move the refugees decide to make. Ah. If the spy is captured, Galt might make a surprise attack. Oh, that's not good, Kimasabi. There are too many gunmen in town. Probably many of those gunmen are wanted by the law. Tonto, I have an idea. It might work. Huh? 
And what's your idea, Kimosabi? While I tell you about it, take off that Mexican disguise. Uh-huh. We're going to ride to an army post about ten miles west of the valley where the refugees are camped. I'll show Galt's letter to Colonel Miller and see what he has to say. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now you can... Ride, ride, ride with the Lone Ranger! Yes, you can act like the Lone Ranger, think like the Lone Ranger in genuine Western adventures. Exciting Lone Ranger mysteries. Now on the backs of these popular General Mill cereals. Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jets, and Tricks. There are 11 of these thrilling mysteries. One to a package. And you'll want to solve them all. Here's a sample. One mystery is called The Guilty Stranger. A stagecoach is robbed and there are two suspects. Which one is guilty? The Lone Ranger finds out. Can you? To help you, there's an invisible writing clue inside the package. Dip this amazing clue in water and writing appears like magic. What's more, the back of the clue tells you how you can become an official Lone Ranger deputy with mask, badge, identification card, and hollow silver-colored bullet. Look for the Lone Ranger Mystery Adventures, now on specially marked packages of Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jets, and Tricks. Get them all and ride with the Lone Ranger! Now to continue... Late that afternoon, after showing the letter of identification, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were admitted to the office of Colonel Miller, the commandant at Camp Brady. The officer welcomed both men warmly and said, I've heard a lot about you, and I'm delighted to meet you, both of you. Please sit down. Well, thank you, Colonel Miller. We uh, came here because of a situation in Lone Pine. Oh, yes, I'm familiar with it. You are? A committee from Jim Gold's camp called on me for aid. Yes, I know that, sir. But did they tell you the whole story? I believe so. As I understand it, a man named Tarbuck has practically stolen the town. That's what it amounts to. I'll have to send the Washington office a complete report, together with sworn statements from the people who have complaints about the government in Lone Pine. Tarbuck represents the government. I know it. But it will take time to prepare such a report, and at least two weeks for it to reach Washington. That is correct. Then there'll be a further delay before you are given the authority to act. I may not be given that authority. It depends largely on the nature of the report. Colonel Miller, those refugees will starve before they receive help in their fight against oppression. I'd like to help them. I might send a little food, but we haven't much to spare. Uh, Colonel Miller, I know that you can't attack Tarbuck and his gang of crooks without authority, but... If I made an attack on any town... No matter how poorly it's governed, without specific authority from Washington, I'd, I'd be court-martialed. If you and a detachment of your men were to be attacked by outlaws, uh, would you need authority from Washington to defend yourselves? Of course not. That's an entirely different matter. What would you do if Tarbuck's men opened fire on a detachment of your men? We'd certainly return the fire. And if there were any survivors after the battle, we'd take them prisoner and punish them to the full extent of the law. That's what I hoped you'd say, sir. Do you think Tarbuck's men are foolish enough to attack the United States Army? They might make such a mistake. I doubt it. Colonel, would it be possible for a detachment to make an inspection trip to Lone Pine? Well, I'd I'd say it would be possible. Would you sincerely like to help Jim Galt and the decent people who have been driven from their homes? I would indeed. But you can see that there's little I can do. All you have to do, sir, is to send a detachment to inspect Lone Pine. Sir? At a specific time. Yes, I begin to understand. A heavily armed detachment of hard fighters. You mentioned a specific time. Tomorrow night, sir, there will be no moon. It should be a dark night. (laughs) A dark night, In darkness, Tarbuck's men might make that mistake you mentioned. And uh, where would they likely make the mistake? In a narrow valley between Lone Pine and the camp of the refugees. (laughs) Tonto, your masked friend is proof of the saying that where there's a will, there's a way. the army.
army camp, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the camp of the refugees, arriving there after dark. The masked man outlined his plan to Jim Galt, who agreed to do his part. I'll do anything you say. Thanks, Jim, for your confidence. Oh, uh, where is Pete Hanford? He's in his covered wagon. He's been held prisoner there since last night when you exposed him as a spy. Good enough. You wait here with the horses, Toto. Uh-huh. Jim, you and I will carry on a discussion while we walk slowly past Pete Hanford's wagon. Helplessly tied, hand and foot, Pete Hanford lay on the floor of the heavy prairie schooner. Hey. Presently, he heard a voice that he remembered. The voice of the masked man who had exposed him as one of Tarbuck's gang. No, I don't know. It's the, it's the only thing to do, Gold. But I'd rather take almost any other course. But I've talked to Colonel Miller. Help from the Army can't be secured without orders from Washington. So you'll have to make the attack. When do you suggest? Tomorrow night would be the best time. Tomorrow night, eh? Yes, it'll be a dark night. You should be able to get through the valley and close to town before you're discovered. By taking the Tarbuck gang by surprise, you might learn. I do wish I could get free. Tarbuck should know about this. Don't go and whoops. Pete Hanford struggled against the ropes until he was exhausted. He rested for a time and was about to renew his struggles when he heard a low voice. He... Looking toward the open back of the wagon, he saw a man in the shadows. Who are you? You... You don't ask questions. Me? Cut rope. Yeah. Hey, how'd you get past the guard? There's no guard outside. Them figure you tied tight. There. Now you're free. Why are you setting me free? Money. I've got no cash here, but I'll see that you're paid. Not good. Me leave saddled horse for you near big trees south of camp. Maybe me see you in Lone Pine. You pay there. Oh, you wait right here, Injun. I'll be back in a couple of hours and I'll bring money with me. That's good. You get some more rope so you can tie me up again when I get back. I don't want anyone to know that I got free. Uh huh. Me be here. <laughs> sneaked out of camp, on the saddled horse, then rode hard to a meeting place a few miles away, where another member of the Tarbuck gang was stationed. Oh, 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 oh. He told quickly of his exposure and capture, then disclosed the refugees' plan to attack. It's tomorrow night, Red. They'll come through the valley to Lone Pine. They figure that with me captured... They'll take Tarbuck and the rest of the boys by surprise. <laughs> They're the ones who'll be surprised. Yeah. But now, I gotta get back to the camp. You're going back? Yeah. If Gold finds I've escaped, he may call off the attack because he'll figure Tarbuck's been warned of it. Tarbuck's been hoping those critters would attack. Yeah, I know it. Oh, Red, let me have a few dollars to pay that engine who freed me. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, here you are. Oh, thanks. Now, you better ride to Lone Pine. I'm on my way. Steady now. Get up! Get up there! The following night found Tarbuck and his gunman on a hillside, overlooking the narrow valley through which anyone approaching Lone Pine from the north would have to travel. There was no moon. The faint starlight was sufficient only to reveal the men as dark, shadowy figures. Tarbuck said. Yeah, if it was any darker, we wouldn't be able to see him to shoot. We can see him well enough, boss. How long we have to wait, senor? I don't care how long we wait. It'll be worthwhile. We'll be rid of all those people. Hey, when... I hear him. Huh? Yeah, so do I. They're coming, boys. Get set. Right. Right. They're getting close. Now wait for me to fire the first shot. Okay, okay senor. Troopers, knowing they headed toward an ambush, had brought with them a number of spare horses. When they neared the ambush, they drew rein. The colonel addressed his men in the darkness. Men, we're going to be fired on somewhere in the gorge ahead. So we'll send those rattlers horses through ahead of us to draw the fire of the outlaws. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now have your carbines ready. And as soon as you see the rifle flashes, let them have it. Now start the riderless horses. In 
the darkness, the outlaws, about halfway up the side of the hill, heard the approaching hoofbeats, and a moment later saw the vague moving figures. All right, let them have it. Shoot! Get them, boy! The alert soldiers responded quickly, firing their hard-hitting carbines at the flashes of the outlaws' guns. They're charging. They're coming up the hill. Stop me here. We can't stay here, boys. we got to get away. Pack your horses. Drop it over the hill. Tarbuck's men, panicked by the oncoming soldiers, whose carbines barked repeatedly, leaped to their saddles. And as they started their flight up the hill, a horseman appeared at the hilltop, and his cry rang out above the gunfire. Hey, look up there. Jim Galt rode close behind the Lone Ranger. Then other men appeared. They're coming from the top of the hill. We're trapped. Oh, 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 oh. Trapped between the soldiers from the valley and the refugees who followed the Lone Ranger from the hilltop, the outlaws were quickly conquered. Some were killed. Many were wounded. Daybreak found Tarbuck and all of his followers in the custody of soldiers. They were lined up in front of the Lone Pine Cafe, ready for the march to Camp Brady. Jim Gould and the men who had followed him stood nearby. Fellas, the town is ours again. Sure is, Jim. And from now on, we'll be mighty careful not to let a man like Tarbuck get a political toehold. Right. Here comes the colonel. Don't try to send a squad to your camp, Sad. They'll take Hanford into custody and tell your women folk to bring home the wagon. Good, thanks, Colonel. Did you find out which of the crooks shot Bill Salter? Yes, a number of the others named him. He was killed in the fight. Well, that sure takes care of everything. We're mighty grateful to you, Colonel. Forget it, Gold. The army is in debt to you. Those crooks might have escaped if you and your men hadn't cut off their retreat. Well, that wasn't our idea, Colonel. It was that masked man. Yeah? The masked man? Yep. <laughs> the battle is over and everyone is being thanked and commended except the one man who really saved Lone Pine. There he is over yonder with his Indian friend. Hey, they're waving to us. Hi there. Let's go. There he goes, riding away without even giving us the chance to thank him. Yes, that's typical of the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.